Did you know that I never wanted to do this in the first place? Putting content on YouTube was never on my radar. Ever. Well, that's not 100% accurate. If I was going to do it, it was going to be about flipping cars. Go out and buy a car, critique it, gather up all the stuff, fix it, roll it over, and do it again. And maybe get my subscribers involved who wanted to do a little investing and maybe get a return on it. Or buy cars through donations to the channel and give out thank yous or what have you. If I was going to do YouTube in a serious manner, that's how I would do it. Not what I'm doing or have been doing. So how did it come to be like this? Ooh, that's a long story. And it goes way back to the 80s where I met people who were anything but patriotic, let's say, within the confines of our military. I know they're out there. I've seen them. I've worked for them. I've worked with them. And let me tell you, even back then, when I didn't know what I was looking at, I was not impressed. These people's ideas around the logistics of doing things, or at least why I was trying to do things successfully, are way out in left field. That's why very seldom do what they are trying to accomplish ever get done. Or at least wise doesn't get exposed because they're not up on the logistics, logistics aspect. They think because they're so smart, everything they're going to do will just work. And the last eight years should have taught you that too. But like I said, back then, I was just a young, dumb kid. I had no idea what I was looking at, no less on the edge of getting into. I finally wised up and, and got away from those people. But yeah, it wasn't easy. And I could see why the game is actually being played like it is today. Because you don't just walk away after they let you in without some kind of consequences being attached. And just to put a lid on it, if you take their oath, you don't walk away. At least wise, not alive. So let's fast forward through the years after I got out of the military. One kid, two kids, three kids, a crazy old lady, and <laughs> anyhow, that finally came to its logical conclusion. It was either my end or end it. So here I am today. But along the way, I ended up looking after an old guy who at the beginning was capable of taking care of himself, but it was a downhill slide from there. And, and some very interesting things happened while I was looking after him. Number one, he w had this addiction I don't know anything other than to call it, to the flu shot. Every year come this time of the year, he had to go get that damn flu shot. It was a, it, it had to be done uh, just the way it was. And every freaking year, he'd be sick as a dog all winter because of it. So right away, that gave me a red flag for the whole shots thing. 
But as he was telling me stories about how he literally walked out of Germany after um, World War II started and he was afraid that he was going to get drafted into the Hitler Youth and the brown shirts and all that stuff. And some of the stories that he told got me wondering about some of the people that I had met during my time in the military because a lot of the things that they had said were very authoritarian, were very narrow-minded towards the future, I guess you could say. So I took it upon myself to start researching everything I could find about how our planetary power structure is made, created, and maintained. And I got a hell of an education because that was while well, YouTube was still YouTube. And you could find just about anything you wanted on any subject. Something most of us know today is extremely difficult. For example, that's when I learned about Skull and Bones, what 9-11 was really about. Along with the history of Bill and Hillary Clinton's time in Arkansas and Obama's upbringing into the political system. And let me tell you, back then, it was a hell of an education because Obama was everybody's hero back then. And some of the things that I was running across on this very platform, by the way, represented anything but a hero. And then what really got my attention was running across a uh, name of an organization that I remembered from when I was a kid. The Weather Underground and Bill Ayers. The Weather Under Underground was a wannabe terrorist organization, domestic terrorist organization with designs on a communist takeover of the U.S. government by attacking the infrastructure and causing chaos. Bill Ayers, it turns out, is really tight, or was at one time, with Barack Obama. The stories of the kind of relationship they had, I really can't get into it on this platform. But let's just say there were ditty parties long before there were ditty parties. And I don't know if any of you have ever known any hardcore addicts, but an addict's got to do what an addict's got to do to get their fix. And that kind of brings us to where we are today with a brief stop off at 2016 when someone from outside of their class or their cabal or their system said, hey, I want to run for president. And in typical fashion, because mind you, I've met these people before. They said, oh yeah, come on. It's, it's a big joke. Come on in. Give it a shot. Thinking to themselves the whole time that they got it locked up. And there's no way he's ever going to be the nominee, no less, win the election in 16. Well, they found out differently. And that threw the whole system into chaos. Obviously. Because even though he ran in their circles, he was never a part of their club. Even though it might have looked like that to the casual observer, he never wanted to do what they do. And once he got onto what it is that they do, he switched parties. 
Now bear in mind, I'm not just pulling this out of my butt. I have researched all of this from multiple sources and multiple angles. All because I had the time. Because for the most part, the only thing I had to do while I was doing the caregiver thing was keep up with the house, do the shopping and chores, and wipe somebody's butt as they're denying. Well, you get what I'm saying. Now, as I'm looking into all of this stuff, along the way, I run across from across this what is supposedly con crazy conspiracy conspiracy theorist theorist guy from Texas who's talking about number one some of the things I experienced in the military at least wise the aspects of the world that they talked about number two how it has been instituted or is being instituted and in working towards where we are today because don't kid yourself we were heading to to where we are today anyway but donald trump was a sort of fly in the ointment that made them use things in manners that they hadn't intended to use them throwing them off of their game making it obvious to the rest of us at least wise those who are willing to see what the hell is going on? I've never been diagnosed with any kind of mental disorder. I'm not on any, any medication. Hell, I don't even get food stamps, even though I'm sure I would qualify. As far as I'm concerned, every one of those things, including whatever mental diagnosis, makes you susceptible to be a victim of their system. In other words, you're not going to cause too much trouble if uh, one side is saying that they will supply you with your crazy pills or your script or keep feeding you when you're too lazy to get off your own ass and go do it for yourself. When my ancestors got off the boat, long after slavery had been abolished, mind you, we pointed them out into the country, said, there you go, get her done. And you either made her, make it or break it on your own. That's what this country should be all about and what we have lost but i digress a little on that one what really opened my eyes was what they do for fun or what they think is fun what they call entertainment it's horrible the shit these people do is beyond description. Most of you, it's it's so heinous, some of the acts, that you would never believe it. Because it's outside your relative experience as a human being on this planet. Outside of your life experience. Well, I've said it before, I think that's a dumb way to look at the world because we all know there are bad people out there. And every once in a while, the really bad ones end up in the spotlight. And who's to say that there ain't a whole pile of them out there all blackmailing each other, beholden to each other for whatever to keep their system going. And if that's the case, considering the things they do for fun, profit, and entertainment, how far would they be willing to go when it was all on the verge of potentially being exposed? As an example, 
as a real-time example? Would you spy on the person's campaign who could potentially expose you so you could know what he knows or at least have a general idea of where things might be going? When you were unsuccessful at maintaining or continuing your reign of power, would you accuse that person of working with a foreign government to usurp the election so that they could take power? When that didn't work, would you try to impeach that same person over fri frivolous things? Even if they knew they weren't going to win in the long run just to try to smear his reputation? And after all of that, and you finally got back into power, when that one person said, hey, this ain't right, I'm going to run again, how would you respond? Would you drag them into court over and file what's called lawfare or frivolous lawsuits and use every judge, prosecutor, and person within your system to make sure that they got a conviction? You might. And you definitely would if your life was on the line, if it all got exposed. I don't like, and I've said it before, that it has been allowed to go this far. As far as I'm concerned, the American public would have been just fine and survived had what needed to happen happened on Inauguration Day 2021. But it didn't happen because somebody else thought, apparently, that they wanted to teach us a very dangerous lesson and put other people's lives at risk along the way so that we could learn it. At least that's what I hope is going on here. Because if there isn't more to this than what we see on the surface, it's already over and we're already screwed. So let me wrap up with a little story because this is running longer than I intended. When I was a little kid, life was really difficult. If I wasn't being emotionally attacked from one direction, I was being physically attacked from another. And I spent my time, most of my childhood actually, well not most, till eh, nine years old I believe it was, living in fear. Fear of the next emotional ambush or the next physical attack. And one day, and this is where we all need to get to in order to get out from underneath this, I said to myself, I'm tired of being scared. I ain't running no more. If, if they get me, they get me. Because life isn't worth living like this. And that's why I have produced the content that I have over the years. That's what has gotten me shadow banned to the degree that I am. And it has made me friends. It has lost me friends. And I don't care. Because the only thing that matters to me, as far as I'm concerned, more than my own life, is that the concept of freedom and liberty live beyond me. There are those who would say that the Constitution is just a piece of paper with a bunch of words written on it. That's only if you don't believe in those words. You could say, say the same thing about the Bible. Just paper and words. Just like our lives, we have to give it meaning. We have to stand up.
for something that we believe in, whether it be politically, socially, or biblically. Or in the end, all is lost, or all will be lost to evil. And evil does have a game plan or a blueprint. And it's always the same. The oldest sins in the newest ways. <laughs>